My motivation um, for pursuing this and getting some professional legal assistance, um, none of it was about financial um, gain for me. My primary, my primary focus was to get the files and read them. I believed that that's what was going to help me close it all off and move forward. Um, the fact that it was then proposed that there could be scope for compensation for, for what had happened was an absolute bonus and more of a confirmation um, that I might have been wronged and I, it, it wasn't my fault. The thing about compensation, really, I mean, I'm, I'm an adult and I have a comfortable life and a home. I don't, to me, it was a token thing. It was a, a principal thing that was involved. The amount of money was irrelevant. Even one of the things that we talked about early on was that in our society, you can't go to social services and the school and everyone involved and go, you're really bad. You mustn't do that again. Now change your policies. The only thing they understand is suing them. If you sue them for huge amounts of money, you take as much damage as you can off them for one reason only, that they will change the way they do things. So if nothing else, you'll make them sit up and take notice by the amount that you're trying to take off of them. The principle is you have a right to do this and you should do it if you can because it stops these things happening in the future. I never pursued it down the road of compensation. I pursued it down the road of stopping him. And that's what happened in the end. He was locked up and he was sent to jail. And then the police asked me at the end of that process, at the very end, the last conversation I had with them, oh, by the way, do you want to claim compensation? And I said, yes, I will. How do I do it? And they gave me this form, told me how to fill it in. And then I, this was for criminal injuries compensation. Um, <clears throat> and I went through that process which took two and a half, nearly three years. And then, having received that compensation, I then went ahead, with, went on with my life. I was able to improve my life, basically. I could afford to eat properly again. It took, it took a big weight off me, having someone with a lot of knowledge and um, background in dealing with child abuse cases. Um, it took a lot of pressure off me. Um, I don't think I would have pursued the compensation claim at that stage if I hadn't found someone to support me legally. It, um, every, every time I had to go through the review, um, you have to fill in more paperwork for the compensation authority and I found that difficult because I kept feeling I kept getting to a point where I thought I can relax about it and maybe start putting it to one side and get on with living my life and then they requested something else um, so for me it was just a relief when he said yes I'll I'll take it on and I'll just take it from here and I'll deal with it and it was just like, oh, I walked out of the offices and just thought, oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> it was such a relief. The compensation thing is like, really, how much money would compensate you? Really, you know, you, if somebody gave you a million pounds, would you then forget about what happened? No. Okay, maybe you can buy some nice stuff, but you wouldn't forget about what happened. So money is not the answer to that, but the process of doing it is right. Because if I'm mugged in the street, if my house is burgled, if I, you know, I have a right to compensation because something's been taken away from me or I've been damaged. And I think it's really, really important for people to, in society to recognise that that person has been damaged, is a victim of crime. And it is a crime. It's not just a, some shameful thing that we don't want to talk about. It's a crime. And it was dreadful. And sometimes just the process of going through that and saying, yes, I'd like to be compensated, please, because I was a victim of crime, you know, it's fine, it's some money, it's worth having, but what's important about it is the notes that are behind it. The notes that sounded that said, we understand as a society that somebody did something wrong to you and that we can't make it up to you, but here 
is an amount of money just to show that we believe you and we think it's true and that it's right that somebody shows that and recognises it. So if you can do that, that's a good process to go down. I just, I just felt so bloody good about what I'd done and how long it had taken and how much hard work. It was almost like having a part-time job. That's how arduous it can be as well. There are many meetings that you may have to go to. There are many forms you have to sign. There are many documents that you have to read. I knew I could just pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm having a really bad day. You've sent me this thing to sign. I'm reading all this stuff and I don't like what I'm reading. It's, it's wrong, it's right, it's this, it's that, it's the other. I don't remember saying that and I don't remember we agreed to this. And he'd be there, say, look, come in. Bring it with you, come in, we'll go through it together. You know? And that is really important that they'll do that for you. That the people that are dealing with your case will actually say, if you're not happy, come in, bring your papers, bring it down. Don't sign anything until we've talked about it together. Where my life was, it was in an archive box on a shelf in, in you know, in County Hall. And I, I, that's exactly how it felt in my head. I kind of, I, I felt like I was stuck in the past um, and I couldn't move forward until I'd kind of got these and gone over it. So I had a call from, from my solicitor who, who basically summarised and explained um, that he'd had the report back and off the back of that report, um, legal, legal, legal services, legal aid, um, said they were going to have to decline my, my funding based on, on, on that report, by which point I'd pretty much read through all of my, um, all of my files. Instead of me spiralling off into some dark place, putting myself back, thinking, here we go again, what was the point? Um, it, it, I was completely at peace with it and I, I, I felt that I'd achieved what I wanted to achieve during the process, which was reading everything and, and seeing who made what decisions and why. And then a couple of days later, the phone rang and it was um, my solicitor who said that he'd spoken to some uh, partners at the practice and that they were happy based on what they'd seen from my case files, etc., uh, that they were happy to to proceed um, on a no win, no fee basis for me. No obligation whatsoever to proceed. It was an offer that was put to me, um, and I was given time to think about it. It 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 yeah, it worked. There was um, a financial financial conclusion. Um, the, the county council settled out of court, so um, it, it was just another, another bolster back up, um, just that I, I had been wronged and that was being acknowledged finally, um, albeit, you know, it was settled out of court. Thankfully, it, it, I, I'm, I'm sure I would have coped if we'd had to have gone to court, but it was a nice, speedy conclusion after three or four years with with my solicitor um, going over stuff. It 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 was worth it, definitely, um, and completely out of the blue, unexpected. When I got the phone call to say that I'd won, I was pleased, but I didn't feel the elation that I thought I would have. Um, it took it took a few weeks for it to sink in that actually I was vindicated again, <laughs> um, and that I'd got what I felt I was entitled to. Um, but it was it was a very strange feeling. It was almost surreal, like I didn't actually really believe that. I had this money sitting in the bank and it was actually mine and I could do what I wanted with it. And um, 
yeah, it was, it was it was a very surreal situation. I think if I'd won the lottery, it it would have been maybe I've been jumping up and down a bit more. Um, I think it was just because of what it represented and what I'd gone through as a child, and then what I had to do to fight for it. And the fact, you know, it was just I couldn't believe that I had actually won. Um, so it did take a while for it to sink in. And I promised myself that I would do good things with it and didn't want to fritter it away. So I want to be able to look, look around and go, yeah, I've, I've got things. I've got things that are important. I've done things that are important with it. I think it's important to value, value yourself and know that you actually are worth worth fighting for something and it's not an easy process and I would hope that it's at some stage it will get easier for people to make claims but I think it's important that people do and um, you know if you get knocked down then get back up and fight your corner really I think it's really really important that you don't give up